Today, we'll look at what several institution analysts and portfolio managers are saying about Tesla. So first, Dan Ives of Wedbush Security says the mojo is back at Tesla. He sees Tesla beating the streets delivery number with over 470,000 cars. He's keeping his outperform rating and a 300,000 price target. Second, Adam Jonas of Morgan Stanley is saying that interest rates can only do so much to address affordability of US auto. They see automakers offering more incentives as the average monthly payments is near all-time highs of $730. $35 per month to buy a car. Morgan Stanley also says Tesla intends to spend at least $10 billion in AI in 2024. And finally, portfolio manager Gary Black is saying that he still sees Tesla as a car and energy company, and it's the upcoming $25,000 to $30,000 car not the robo-taxi that is most important for valuation of Tesla. Now let's welcome uh, Larry Goldberg joining us. Welcome, Larry. Appreciate you. Great to be here. That's going to start off with this new um, chart that we just saw. And if you rank the top 10 companies in, you know, in the world, Tesla is actually back up in the top 10 now. So a small uh, stock movement. What do you think? <laughs> well, it's going to be climbing up that particular <laughs> that particular ladder. <laughs> yeah. That I have no doubt. And if if uh, if the price of gasoline keeps or oil keeps dropping, Berkshire mm -hmm. may drop. Oh, okay. very significantly. And so, Saudi Aramco yeah. will also drop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I think that uh, Dan Ives is the man. I mean, I, I follow Dan. I regard him as one of the top analysts. Um, I think he understands innovation and technology extremely well. Um, he's been very... Um, Cautious on um, Tesla in you know in the early part of this year, um, he's been calling on them to get their mojo back, mm -hmm. and um, as I did, he was very encouraged by Elon's first uh, quarter um, earnings call. Very encouraged. He he could see the the pattern coming. He talked it up and uh, he hasn't been disappointed. And I think we're going to see the numbers that he's calling for. I think we're going to see over 470,000. Um, the people I follow who are um, forecasting, I think, are in agreement with him. And so I think uh, that will be, I, I think the whisper number is going to be higher than the streets are currently at, uh, because I think there's a general optimism. And we've seen China numbers coming in very well. By the way, Europe, Europe numbers are not that great. In fact, European numbers are really hurting right now yeah. because all of Europe's hurting on the EV front. But um, I think that US numbers haven't been that bad. Um, Cybertruck is on fire. So I think we're going to see over 470. I think he's right. Yeah, I think so too. So uh, we're going to see Tesla drop the production and delivery numbers on October 2nd, Wednesday. So that's why Dan Ives is coming out and he's saying that I think like he, exactly what you just said, right? We could see a 470,000 number on the heels of a strong China demand this quarter. The street right now is at 462. And then eventually, like you said, the whisper number is 465, 470. So there's still ping um, people like you and Dan. Yeah, he didn't say 470. Number. He said 470K plus. Plus. And so yeah. he said, after a bumpy first half for Tesla, we see a much stronger sec second half ahead being led by China. He still keeps a $300 price target here, uh, outperform rating, and uh, he said Mojo's back, right? So it's the things we just said here. Continues that China continues to heat up and price demand stabilization has continuously been seen throughout the quarter. We believe this quarter is a major step in the right direction for the Tesla story. China, the global demand stabilizing, China's strength providing momentum. Like you said, Europe overhang continues. So significant growth here. Tesla with China, clearly the start of the show this month. He's still shooting for 1.8 million deliveries, which is great because I've been saying, the reporting the last week, all these analysts, one after another, they're increasing their targets for the 2024, but they're still staying below 1.8. What, what is your number at this point, Larry? I'm at 1.8 um, yeah. and have been, you know, all year. Elon said 1.8 at one point. Yes. Um, he said we were going to equal last year's sales, and I have no reason to doubt him. 
I think uh, Cybertruck's going to surprise everybody next quarter, big time, big time. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Despite, I think that the, produ the production's going to grow. Despite it being the Foundation Series, you think that the sales are increasing? The Foundation Series, I think, is the foundation price. I think it's the base price of the truck going For forward. a long time. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So a lot of people that, you know, that can add another 20, 30,000 to the hit there. I do think it's going to be over 1.8 million. So this is what uh, Dan is saying with the upcoming RoboTax event expected to provide some notable updates on the company around FSD, AI and the company's future. The next phase of Tesla's growth story is around autonomous RoboTaxis and AI. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> why why Keep... would we not talk about Optimus? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think he probably dropped this before the invites came out, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, I, I'm surprised. And and I guess because, you know, he's looking at 2025 and not seeing, and, and 2025 won't have any Optimus revenue in it. Yeah. So it's very difficult for an analyst to talk more than a year out in terms of product. Hey, yeah. At least he's talking RoboTaxi as we'll we'll share the next story with Gary Black. He does not include robot. Oh, he did. He did already see this before the invite. So we remain confident that Tesla story as we believe this third quarter delivery sprint could be a major step back in the right direction with a turnaround story underway, fueled by strengthening backdrop and key innovations in AI and FSD propelling the company forward. Uh, we see positive catalysts ahead for Tesla. So he did see it, the We Robot RoboTaxi event. He still calls it that, RoboTaxi event. So outperform rating, $300 price tag. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, I I, I think that it's um, it's a good start. Um, I, I see RoboTaxi as part of the Optimus story. I see Optimus as part of the AI okay. story. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're inextricably bound. He doesn't mention energy, um, mm -hmm. but I think that's built into his calculation because he's been very bullish on energy in the past. So, yeah, I think 300 is a very – look, we may see a decline immediately after the event. Right. It's not unusual. Now, it's generally that when they have an in launch of a product, price can, the, the stock may wobble the day after, but the price – does go up. And so this is a launch event, a product launch event. We don't know what product it is yet, but that could well influence the price up. But in the past, these events have sometimes, or, or big Tesla events have sometimes been accompanied by a price decline. I think you and I met on Investor Day yeah. first and um, we had a little difference of opinion about what was going to happen. <laughs> you just want me to say you're gonna... right again. <laughs> You turned out to be right. That's true. Yeah. So so it could happen. But, yeah. you know, we're not talking about tomorrow. We're not talking about next month. We're talking about where's the stock going. And this is not investment advice. This is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. And my opinion is that we, are, we have a long climb to go. And my price target is significantly higher in the year to come of 300, than $300. All right, good. So you like Dan, you like what he's saying. This is what uh, Morgan Stanley, Adam Jonas is saying. Um, so they're saying that there's only so much interest rates can do. As we know, interest rates got cut a couple of weeks ago, can do to address affordability uh, in the US. People want to buy cars here. We expect to see the trend in higher incentives. So you still will see automakers having to give incentives to try to attract the auto consumer. They got this beautiful chart here of the average new monthly payments, dollars per month, that people are signing up for if they want to buy a car right now. And it's at $735. That's crazy per Look month. Look at the difference between 2021, right? the beginning of 2021, and today. Yeah. Yeah, just look, look at that jump. It's from $550 to $750. Yeah. It's like a 40% or 38% jump in three years. 38% jump in three years. It's staggering. Larry, um, now that they start cutting rates, when do you expect that this monthly will actually go down? Because I, 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 I'm aware that just because they cut rates doesn't mean it happens right away. But when, when do you see it? It's not going to go down by much because of the reduction in the interest rate. This massive increase mm -hmm. 
of almost 30% is not a result of the increase in interest rate. Okay. It's a result of you know the blowout of pricing of cars, the, in, the increase of size of car, I see. and the increase of complexity of car, and the car prices have just blown through the roof. And you know that's why the Chinese are completely decimating European and American cars in China have decimated, not are, have mm -hmm. decimated. It's not even decimated. I mean, not, not down 90%. They're not down 10%. They're down 90% and they're losing their last 10%. Mm -hmm. GM lost $2 billion in, in China last year. They're going to lose more this year. It, it's the, the Chinese are killing it because their price, their cars are you know, down at the $20,000 level, $25,000 level, and they've got the same stuff in it that the European and American cars have in it. We can't compete, and we cannot get our, our citizens to buy cars that they bought, you know, three years ago at $35,000, and today they're at $55,000 or $45,000. We can't do that. Nice. And okay. it's not the interest rates. The interest rates are really less than a third of that difference. Okay, good. Thank you for explaining that. Uh, I always assumed that it was more than that. That's great to know how much. So just, you know, AJ shared this from Cox Automotive. What's happening with EVs in the U.S.? And it's growing. It's growing by 8% year over year in third quarter of 2024 to nearly 9% market share. Here's uh, EV share is uh, here. And then this is what's happened to EV sales. So, yeah, well, I have a the thesis that EV sales are being decimated by hybrid sales. Right, I agree with you. Be, be, because the first um, generation of OEM EVs was so bad that mm. people are just turning away from them. And, and in order to conform, you know, the, the OEMs are making hybrids. And it's good for Tesla because Tesla will pick up uh, increased volume. They're going to lose a lot of competitors. But we're just inviting the Chinese to come and kill us. I mean, how are we going to avoid the Chinese coming here? They're going to manufacture their cars in Mexico and they'll arrive. And what are we going to do? Close the gates? I can't. I mean, maybe we'll try, but I don't think it's going to happen. The Chinese will let's end up end up setting up plants here and selling cars at significantly lower prices than the U.S. automakers, even the foreign automakers within the U.S. today. Well, there's two things I think that could happen. One is Trump is saying that if you are, they're just going to shut down the Mexico. You have to build the factory in the U.S. Otherwise, you get 100% tariffs. That's one option. The other issue is that the um, U.S. Commerce Department is now submitting policies that they're going to ban outright any kind of software coming from China. So that, that they're, the two combined together could stop it. Well, firstly, Trump has to be elected first. <laughs> There's some impediments there. But secondly, China, China doesn't care. China will make sure that the software is written here. They, they'll solve that right, problem. They'll find a way. Okay. They'll find a way. I mean, it's going to be very very difficult to stop China. Very difficult. They'll make the car in Thailand or they'll make the car in Korea. They'll make the car and they'll make the car significantly lower cost than we do. I mean, you, you only just look mm. at Chinese sales in China yeah. and compare them to the US cars, even US cars made by Chinese companies are dying on the vine. Why? Because what we've made is a very complex car, very expensive car, and it's got to the point that what we're cramming into the car in terms of value is just too high. And, you know, Tesla are pricing that value into the car, but at a much lower cost. The value you get for a Tesla car is so much greater than the value you get for a German car or an American car mm -hmm. or even a Korean car. 
Korean is probably closer to Tesla than most of the other brands. So it's we have an almighty struggle on our hands, and the hybrid isn't going to cut it. Love it. Oh, my. Yeah, Larry, you're on fire today, learning a few things <laughs> here. Appreciate this so much. Um, but Morgan Stanley, right? So Adam Jonas, one of the things he's, uh, they said, other than the interest rate issue, they're also saying that uh, Elon spending on AI. So the Musconomy, all of Elon's companies together, they're spending the market caps of Riven and Lucid combined on AI this year alone. Yep. Tesla intends to spend at least $10 billion in 2024, several compute projects. Of course, we're aware of the supercluster in Austin, Texas, plan to house 50,000 H100 GPUs and 20,000 of Tesla's own D1 chip, an inference compute dojo, right? Their most recent uh, 2024 10Q showed $2.6 billion of computer equipment, hardware, and software. I feel like we've already reported on this. $2.5 billion yeah. of A infrastructure. I don't know if anything here is new. So they're talking about $10 billion in AI in 2024, and then $10 billion in XAI, not to mention XAI and its own 10 billion spend. Yeah. So we know this, right? Well, I, I you know, a few crit, crit, critical comments. I think he's mixing Dojo up and the inference computer. The, the inference computer they're putting in there is the AI4 chip. Um, and, and so that's what they're, that's what they're implementing. But look, The, the what 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 is tesla doing tesla is building a software behemoth mm -hmm. a software behemoth and that is the that is what is going to distinguish the tesla vehicle from all the others and china can't compete against that they really can't compete against that and that's the i mean the tesla still has the halo car in china there's no doubt about it and it's you know it continues to do well i mean we've got to re we've got to refresh the why and we've got to do that soon uh, in order to continue growing the why's value and we've got to come out with a lower cost uh, a lower uh, finish car we've got to come out with a robot taxi car in china this is very important to our to our economic health at some point, all these investments in AI is going to translate into increased car sales, whether it's RoboTaxi, whether it's uh, features uh, like Grok and others giving it that differentiator, what's out there. And like you're saying, it's like competing against Tesla, uh, China, um, yeah. and all that. So that's great. Okay, so next story is with Gary Black. He's a portfolio manager, and um, he's saying this. He was on Schwab Network. I'll play this minute and a half video of him. He's saying that the upcoming twenty-five to thirty thousand car, not the robo taxi, it's that car that's more the most important piece of how you value Tesla, and that's why he still gives his two hundred seventy price target for the um, for the stock. My two seventy is not done. It just includes a take rate on FSD, so I include nothing for robo taxi. I have a big energy um, ramp up over the next ten years, and a big uh, we'll call it, you know services ramp up. But the, the, the auto business is the big chunk of that um, $270. And so, look, you can be excited owning Tesla. Why? Because the deliveries are going to be, and the most important thing to me is the twenty-five dollars to $30,000 car. And I've written extensively about this. If you go on Twitter under uh, at Gary Black 00, you'll see it. But this is very reminiscent of 2020 when they introduced the Model Y. And Model Y was a new category, allowed them to go into the CUV category. The bears said, oh, this is just a big Model 3. It's just like a Cowboys Model 3. That is not true because you get a whole new TAM by going into the compact category, which is about 12, 13% globally. The number two car in the world right now is Toyota Corolla. Number one is Model Y hit by Tesla. And once you have a Tesla compact, you're bringing the Tesla brand and its performance um, and its safety record. Um, and, you know, all the things that people love about Teslas, you can, you know, charge them anywhere. And you're putting it into that compact category and they're going to take a lot of market share by doing that so that's what i get excited about it mm. and i think at the end of the day you want to own tesla for the ev business and the and the and the um the energy business and if you get a robo taxi car at some point that's an option it's a free option you're getting because you're only paying 270 dollars 
ex rover tax the way I look at it. What's your thoughts on what he just said? Well, he's not wrong to value the car company at around two hundred and seventy dollars. I don't know if it's two seventy or three hundred or two. I don't know. Um, but to buy Tesla uh, as a car company is a little crazy. It's fully priced as a car company. Um, you buy Tesla because you get an option on Optimus. You get an op option on FSD, and they've extraordinary options. And, and you get a, uh, an option on real-world AI, which has even larger TAM than just those products. There, there are an enormous number of opportunities beyond that. So I would, I would say that he's right. That's kind of the value. Of, uh, it's a good valuation of Tesla as a car company. But if you're buying a, if you want to buy a car company, okay, that's a good price for Tesla as a car company. But nobody buys Tesla because they want to buy a car company. Mm -hmm. People buy Tesla because they want to buy the future. And what is the future? Yeah. You know, it's I robots, we robots. Sorry, we robots. It, it's the it's the panoply of products that are going to come with embodied AI. And so if you're not buying for that panoply of products, then, you know, why Tesla? If you want to buy a panoply of those products and you're getting a car company at, which is valued at 270, wow, that's a hell of a deal. So I can see why Gary doesn't really carry Tesla in his fund or maybe carries a few shares in his fund because I don't think he gets it. And and you know we can disagree. He's he's a you know he's a portfolio manager. He's looking at it as a portfolio manager, and that's fine. I love it. Yeah, I mean, so we just covered Dan Ives talking about autonomy, um, and he said that you know the the car business is important. It needs to stabilize. I, I know Gary said that as well, but he's like you know he keeps saying okay, uh, the 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 Tesla is an autonomy company. And you got Morgan Stanley reporting on. AI spend. Um, that's the, you know, they, they do a great job of doing that. And then there's some people that are just still focused on the, the car company. I'm not going to value RoboTaxi or the bots until much, much later, until it shows up in the revenue. So, yeah. yeah but we critiqued Gary some year, about a year ago, because he was calling for buybacks and I was saying, right. we need that cash. Right. Now we are seeing how much we need that cash. You know, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. And mark my words, we're going to spend more than ten billion dollars right. on on yeah. You know, yeah. pure AI. The, these stock, uh, these institutional analysts, many of them are saying Tesla should buy back uh, the stock, and then <laughs> we're going no. They they need that money for uh, RoboTaxi for AI. And then that's exactly what happened in the beginning of this year. They need $10 billion, $10 billion. And we are so happy that they did that. But if they had yeah. buy, bought it back, they wouldn't have that uh, luxury um, if they did it this year. Yeah, you you were one of the big proponents. You were debating so many people uh, about right. you're saying they, you, they should not do buybacks. But so many people kept saying, please do buybacks because they were desperate. The stock was down, that kind of thing. And they're not running a business like you have. Um, so... Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Larry. That was great. Love these two shows. Um, thank you so much. Follow Larry on Tesla Larry on X. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.